It's Tuesday. It's 7 p.m. It means it's time for Live with Simone. Hey, guys. Uh, good evening. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, shout out to Eddie again uh, for uh, putting this together uh, and, uh, you know, getting it going and getting me going in a way. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because I have a shout out to uh, Chanel Bell as well, uh, working with her. Uh, Eddie figured it out that I have no tech savvy. Uh, I'm not tech savvy, but also uh, sometimes I struggle for time. As you can see, uh, my kids are here uh, having dinner uh, a little later than usual. So, uh, but anyhow, at any rate, so let's get the show on the road. Let's get started. So uh, first things first. So we covered uh, last week uh, when to drop versus uh, when to drive. So what we're going to do today is go over the technique and kind of uh, a few reminders of uh, what we are looking for here. So um, I think the biggest thing is uh, when uh, talking about uh, uh, driving and dropping, a lot of people, why they struggle even to make that choice or to execute that shot well is preparation. So I highly recommend working on your early preparation. So there's an expression that comes from tennis, which is ready at the bounce. What does that mean? When the ball bounces, you already know which direction the ball is coming to. So for instance, if it's coming and it's right in front of you here on your forehand, you know it's coming, you're getting your body in position, and what you want to do is have the paddle ready. So if I'm gonna drive it, I'm going to have it further back, but as soon as the ball bounces, my paddle is back, and I'm ready to then hit the ball uh, with a drop, same thing, get that paddle set up, get your body set up, get it ready. Uh, then also it's better because you can make adjustments if the ball moves. Like with a lot of players, when they hit the slice return, if you wait until the last second to, to get your paddle back, what happens is that the ball may like take a, a right turn or a left turn, and now you're trying to adjust your body in your paddle. So I would highly, highly recommend early preparation. That's number one. The other part of it, uh, when uh, we are making that decision, am I going to drive or am I going to drop? Um, a big one for me is the distance and time that I have between myself and the ball. We talked a little bit about this when deciding that I'm going to drive. Uh, my body weight is already coming forward. I'm stepping into that ball. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So for instance, if I'm here and that ball is there and now I'm ready, okay, I'm going to load with my legs and I'm going to load it with my core. So that way when I come through, I'm generating also power from my legs and my hips. It's from the ground up versus if, again, if the ball is really close to me, the tendency is, is that you will, your body weight will go back. So again, that early preparation will help and then body adjustment kind of like knowing where the ball is if it's in front of you i think that that's the really good time to drive that ball get your body going forward so with that let's talk about a little bit more technique so so as a lot of people pointed out to me uh and that is my i think it's the tennis in me that comes out when i drive the ball I tend to do a small loop. So in tennis, I used to do a much bigger loop because you have a lot more time, uh, a lot, like a lot more space. So sorry, just a timeout. Come on, stop. I, the kids are, are, as you can see, they're they're trying to distract me here. They should be eating their dinner. Uh, but at any rate, so one thing is uh, when I am going to to take my paddle back. I shortened that up. I used to, again, like I said, I used to go bigger. Now I go a lot smaller. So I go from here forward through it. So, so, but that, but that preparation is huge for me because that's a reminder also to take my paddle back. So when I do that, now I'm loading on my back leg, which is again, my right leg for the forehand. And then as I come through, my paddle is actually staying longer with the ball. 
that's that's a big one uh, especially if I have anybody that plays uh, played uh, any record sports with a, with football you need to make sure that you stay longer through the ball so as you're hitting you coming through and you staying 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 and then you finish I, I like to finish over my shoulder uh, some people sometimes they like to finish a little bit more to the side uh, very very seldom I'll do that but a big big one is again as you go so if I was to create this in steps I would go one is getting that early prep get the paddle back okay two and again pointing out that actually I, I worked with one of my clients today Tom shout out Tom about taking that using the opposite side for balance uh, but also it helps a ton with the usage of my body of my core so so when i go here now this is the part where this shoulder is directing is helping direct that ball to where i'm gonna hit it just to make sure that we're on the same page here so when i come through that will be two as i'm coming through i'm unloading that i'm getting that weight transfer from my right side now to my left hip as i come through okay this is contact is my four and again we want to make sure that we have, and I'll back up a little bit, so uh, we'll make sure that we have the number four is here, out in front, hips are now turning forward more, and then the finish is five, okay? So with that, what will happen is that I should have more power coming through my body versus uh, often I see players they, they hit it hard, but all of their power and, and there's a lot of less control because it's coming all primarily from their upper body, uh, meaning their arm. So, and then people sometimes tend to wrist and come over across the body. So really focusing on uh, using, again, from the toes all the way up to the head. Um, I would like one thing is that don't get caught up because I know it when we first did uh, the video about technique about uh, uh, forehand uh, a lot of people got caught up with the grip uh, because I, 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 I saw you know some some comments about that and, and just asking like can I do it with a continental of course you can uh, just think about how um, you know you can do it with an Eastern you can do it with a uh, semi-western and with uh, the continental pretty much what the adjustment to me for you to make uh, whatever grip you're using is making sure that when you come through that the face of the paddle now starts to be flatter and staying in front of like with the ball uh, sometimes when I see if people have too much of a semi they, they shift their continental grip to a semi-western what happens is that the face of the paddle is facing down onto the ground and that unfortunately then you will start to hit the ball into the net way more often and the the compensation often comes not from opening the face but then from using the wrist and then of course that unfortunately uh, may hurt your wrist but the ball will pop that then you're driving the ball up and high and you don't want that you want to stay lined up in line with that ball and forward so um again whatever so with a continental grip here i'm going to be a little flatter it's going to be a little straighter when i come through okay uh and then uh with the eastern is just a really sh like a small shift uh and and what happens is that it's just a little different angle of the paddle that's what it does and then with the semi is even more of a shift there so then what happens is that again that it, it, the, the reason why like i for example choose to go semi-western is because that was my tennis forehand and i um they call it in tennis they call like the modern forehand because it was much more uh, nowadays there is a lot more top spin being played versus back in the day when all, most of the players played with a continental grip um so so again i would not get caught up on that um focus on uh, your technique more than anything making those adjustments so any questions on the drive so real quick, so I wanted to sure. bring up, there, there were a few questions that came in and, and just to clarify, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Simone, but it sounds like you're talking about driving the ball 
from a third shot perspective or, or from the baseline, Correct. not necessarily like a fourth shot up at the kitchen um, or anything like that. Cause there were some questions about reaction time. And I just wanted to make sure you can clarify this is third shot so, so, at the baseline or mid court area. Yeah. So this is, we're talking about the third, we're staying with the third. Uh, I will cover the fourth shot for sure. Uh, but we are staying with the third and the third is, Again, you serve, your opponent returns, and the third, it, it can be many things. It can be a drive, it can be a drop, it can be even be a lob. But ultimately, um, it is when your opponents are both, or they should be, both at the kitchen line, or one is coming in uh, a little late, we thought about, we addressed that, because they are coming in um, from the serve that you hit. So with that, I would highly recommend that we, 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 got, we have to stay on the same page here because this is the, I would highly recommend just kind of looking, a refresher would be to go back to the one from last week uh, to make, it will make a lot more sense uh, on what we're covering this week. Okay. Uh, another question I thought of regarding the, the drive here is, like, what are some of the most common, I don't want to say mistakes or areas of improvement per se from some of your students when it comes to driving that you work with them on? I think often is um, footwork. It's, it's usually the footwork because if I was to say like what, what, um, what comes first, right? Like swinging too big uh, or getting in the position where you stuck. So often what I find is that players are, they're stuck. So they are, sorry, just a second. Landon, stop me, Ophelia, please. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's just like, this is real life. This is me on an everyday basis. Uh, but at any rate, so, so just the first one is with the, with the footwork that they get stuck, like they get flat footed. And you can't, you can't, you can't see it. But, but what I mean flat foot is that your weight is on your heels and not on the balls of your feet. So staying on the balls of your feet, then again, it helps your body stay balanced. When you get on, on the, your heels, the tendency is now that you lose your balance. And now that's when you're swinging and the core becomes uh, unstable. Okay, so so I would say the first first thing to fix is get that footwork, meaning staying lighter on your feet, making those smaller steps adjustments versus big steps and then getting caught lunging, uh, you know, sideways or forward. Um, so so that's kind of what I, I would say. Then the next one is using too much wrist. So so meaning that when they try to hit they go here and that happens. So instead it's, it's coming through here and then the same side that hit the ball, try to think of that is the side that is away from your face. Does that? I like that. I, yeah, or we, I've, we I've also heard the, well. I've also heard that you, it's almost like you're, you're shining a flashlight from over your shoulder. Where it, like how you're gripping uh, the paddle. Sorry. It's it's almost like you're shining a flashlight from over over your shoulder. So when you when you finish, you know your 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 palm is is away from or your your pinky's away from you, almost like you're holding oh, up a like, flashlight like to shine away. Here, yep. This yep. side. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So this side. Yeah. 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 Sorry. I was trying to That's think okay. of this side of the paddle. It's just yeah. not, not, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, connecting with me. Yes. So this side, yes. So the, the butt cap is the one that is facing out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. I think, um, that's it for questions. Um, we have had a couple questions coming, come in about where, where do you want to place that drive? But I, I feel like you covered that pretty well last week. Is there anything else on that you want to touch on? No. And, and again, I think that this is where the refresher is to go back on that. So that way we can cover the, the drop shot. 
Uh, and uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, if anything, uh, next week, we're going to always kind of combine, but, but we can pretty much to summarize bringing it together. Uh, the one thing that I really, again, um, I want to make it clear because I know and um, often with the drive, to me, one of the most important things is um, when you are um, like the height of the ball, especially when the ball is a little higher, this is the part where flattening it out is always a little bit better because then you get that ball to come down. So, so, so we talked about like a shorter return, a little bit higher. That's like, to me is like, boom, 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 boom. Like, like it's ringing. I am going to drive that ball. So when I'm thinking about driving that ball, I am going to try to bring it like to, to be a little flatter and to stay straighter. So, so because sometimes what happens if you catch that ball high and you keep it, your, uh, swing high that one is the one that tends to then go a little bit out. Uh, and then the, the same can be said if he, the ball is high and then you swing down on it, then the ball will go into the net. So, so think about the, the, the direction of the, the paddle is pretty much where the ball is staying um, when you're hitting. So that's why sometimes when the ball is lower, we talk about the, the, the slice return dropping the head of the paddle underneath that ball is it's it's crucial to you being able to then lift that ball okay um okay on the drop shot so one of the things about the drop shot is that because of the drive uh we the the, the drive and the drop are very distinct when it comes to take backs so on the drive the take back as you can see and if i go sideways here is this good? So if I take back on the drive, I'm going for the back here. So, so then again, because I'm getting more power into the ball, the drop shot is a shorter take back. Often I'll, that this is as far as I'll take the paddle because I want to make sure that my contact point is out in front. That is my number one. When it comes to drop shots, if your contact point is into your body, the ball is very likely to pop up or you're likely to make them errors so making sure that that ball is out in front of you okay that is extremely extremely important um so so when i when i take the paddle back and i'm here my preparation what i am looking for here is that depending on the height of the ball again kind of similar in the sense of dropping the head of the paddle underneath the ball or or opening up the face of the paddle and letting that angle do the job versus trying to use the wrist to bring that ball up. So I like to keep my wrist not stiff, but firm. So as I'm taking it through, this is what, again, let me sure that I'm on the page here on the, on the video. But when I take my, my, my paddle through, it goes forward like that versus this or that. Not a big fan of this one. I, I call this the, the, the flipping pancakes. So we want to try to avoid that. So, so again, I'm going here. And then as I push forward, my paddle is falling through forward. The, the paddle path uh, is, is where I get the most questions. Uh, I like to keep it to my side and keep my elbow does come into my body a little bit. It's not tucked in here, but it's not out either. So, so making sure that it's in a relax, like my shoulders should feel relaxed. It should not feel tight. So then when you go through and you're able to push through, you're, 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 again, you are, it, it should feel no tension on holding that battle. Okay. So, um, another, another thing to be aware of again, um, is that, uh, I might, when it comes to my drop, I try to keep my, my hips. I'm not going, I'm not staying forward, like completely square, only when I get inside of the court. But when I'm doing the, the, the drop, my hips, when I'm hitting the ball, they are actually gonna come forward. So that way it's much easier for me to then step in. When driving, turning the hips more is completely like okay, because naturally, as you drive the ball, the hips are going to then come through and face forward. 
because that is just that force coming through through the hip it then gets you facing forward okay so with that uh, a, a big a big thing like just like the drive is making adjustments with your footwork uh, for me um, I feel that if I'm not moving well my drops are not good uh, because again I'm letting that ball play me instead of me playing the ball so, so a big, big thing is making sure that those adjustments are made as the ball is coming to you, not when the ball bounces and now you kind of on panic mode. So making sure that happens, okay? Uh, and again, uh, there are many intricacies to a third shot drop as far, no, no, sorry. So there's, there's different ways that you can hit it. You can hit it with a slice, you can hit it flat, or you can hit it with top spin. So those are all things that you can consider um and and again um uh, if we i think we cover a little bit of that um maybe we can put a video of that as well um because otherwise we could we could go forever here but um anyways so any other questions any any anything else uh from um anyone out there um watching yeah, just one quick question here so you talked about on the drop it's really important to make sure that you hit that ball out in front of you is it more, less, or the same in front of you as when you're hitting a drive? Um, I like to, so, so for me, actually, the difference between drive and drop is point of contact. So, so for me, I feel that if my point of contact, sorry, sorry, like when the ball comes. So for, for instance, I try to take the ball on the rise when I'm hitting the drive. Uh, when I'm hitting the drop, I actually allow the ball to come up and then as it's coming down, like not, not like way down, but when it's coming, starting to come down is when I choose to hit the drop. So I'm a little bit more patient uh, on as far as like when I'm hitting the, the drop versus when I'm hitting the drive. That's good. So, um, so, 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 uh, come on. Uh, anyways, question. Sorry. It's one of those nights. Uh, I feel like you've actually hit them. And, and just so you know, I've seen a lot of questions coming in tonight, guys, about like where to place the ball, what shots to hit from. If you go back and take a look at episode seven from last week, uh, Simone does a really good job of, uh, of going really in depth with that. So I highly recommend you go and check that out. Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. That would be really helpful. So, uh, but if there are no questions about the technique itself, then I know that, uh, today, uh, I, uh, as promised, uh, the, we're doing the jigsaw commercial first, and then maybe you have a little video because she is, she is not doing it. She's not ready for, for her, her, uh, debut. So, uh, let's play that. All right, here we go. This is, uh, a fun jigsaw commercial. Let's roll it. Girls, I love being a girl. I love to play. I love to inspire. And I love to have fun. So you, you go girl. Go play. Go inspire. Go have fun. Because it's fun to be you. It's fun to play. It's fun to inspire. And it's fun to feel good. So I had, a, of course, uh, as, as uh, most of the videos, all of the videos, uh, that was uh, one of the ones that are, was very personal to me because I actually uh, kind of came up with the concept and they, of course, as usual, Patrick and Ashley put it all together. So it was so much fun to see it uh, come together. Uh, and I wish, I wish that, uh, uh, you know, I could empower my kid, uh, but since I can't, uh, she, she has done some uh, personal performances for me. So uh, I, I'm hoping that you, you I think, I, think you, you, I know that you do, uh, you have a little tiny uh, demo of the kid. And of course, as the mom, I always think that my kid is the greatest, uh, but uh, again, also it doesn't help that I cannot sing. Uh, so for me, she sounds amazing. So we'll see what you think. All right, here we go. 
And just so you know, Landon was joining in in the background as well. So, uh, but uh, my my house is always surrounded with music. Uh, I do sing uh, badly, but I do sing. So, <laughs> uh, she she definitely uh, somehow, um, like I said, my my uncle and then my mom actually reminded that uh, my cousin uh, also is a great singer. So uh, somewhere in there, there's some some. Um, musical uh in the genetics but uh anyhow uh so so again i want to make sure that i thank uh all of my sponsors prince pickleball and jigsaw because for tonight drum roll right yeah we got we got a winner a chicken dinner yeah so do you want to remind everybody about um what the contest was or how or why why it came about and what the winner is going to receive well, so uh, you know, I I hadn't been playing. I I I I've been out and and not playing tournaments. Uh, and honestly, I was just really excited just to be back on the court and competing again. Uh, and I got a uh, gold medal with Andrea. So I suggested. I said, you know, I, I I don't even know how this came about. But I was like, you know what. Uh, I don't know how many how many are gonna come my way this year, uh, and uh, and this is it. So let's uh, I'm gonna start giving away my playing paddles. So as you can see here, I even sign both sides just in case. Uh, but as you can see, this is a paddle that I played with. I played with at the tournament, uh, and uh, it's come to its uh, life. Uh, it's it's over for it and this is me digging balls and this is what happens on the side uh and then it's got lead tape the is the paddle uh playable still absolutely uh however uh i uh thanks to brian uh he sends me very nice pretty ones brand new shiny so every time that i win a gold medal uh, and hopefully there will be at least a few of those uh, that I will be, what I'll be doing is giving away uh, the paddle that I played that tournament with, uh, or maybe a, a, a paddle that uh, I have used and it will be, it will be a little present or a little gift. Um, and then of course we'll do some new paddles and stuff like that. So uh, I'll be, but I'll be trying to give away as much as I can. Um, and then also from Jigsaw, uh, they sent me pretty much uh, their, the whole uh, collection of um, electrolytes. So this is the, the this is one that is the very delicious. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorites, uh, except that then they came up with this one. The, I believe this is the fruit punch. And then this one was um, the flavor to me is the best one. So Mine this too. is the one. That, I'm sorry. Mine too. That's my that's my go to now. I know. I hope. I I at one point uh, last year, I tried a, a different flavor. Um, and again, maybe I'm maybe I shouldn't I shouldn't say anything. But it was it was a different flavor. It, it was it was very interesting. Uh, and I was like, when you come up with when are you releasing that one? Because that might overtake even the fruit mm. punch. It was better than the fruit punch. So I was like, this is amazing. They, they come up with, um, I, I think again, it's just everybody's different. Some people tell me that their favorite is the, the pickleball cocktail um, and that's more citrusy. So again, everybody is, is different. Uh, this is the uh, lemon lime. That's the same thing, uh, a little bit more citrusy. And then this is the ma uh, mag tooth. And usually uh, for people that tend to cramp, this is a great, this is a lifesaver, uh, especially like on a, excuse me, <clears throat> on a day of a lot of competition that I think is 
uh, to take it at night. Uh, so that way, when you wake up in the morning, uh, less likely to, to cramp. Uh, and a lot of people tell me uh, that they sleep really well as well. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, probably because I drink so much coffee, uh, it does not. Uh, I have to always uh, keep the the two to one ratio uh, with that. So, but but like like again, uh, I haven't had any problems with cramping. So that's that's the good news for me. So Eddie, that goes to you. Who is our winner? Yeah, and just to remind you, so the way that you win is Simone wins a gold medal, which is going to be happening very often, I believe. The next time we do a show, she's going to announce it and you have to share the video and you're eligible for it. So what I did is I went through all of the people and we had a lot of people who shared last Tuesday's live stream, but we only have one winner out there. And if we could get a drum roll, please. The winner is Marilyn Cicerone. So nice. Marilyn, awesome. yeah, if, if you want to reach out uh and and give us your contact information we will make sure to uh to do that you can just uh what do you think simone just your your athlete facebook page send a message on facebook is that the best way the best, yeah we'll do that okay. and then and then i'll be in touch great congratulations marilyn uh i hope you i hope you enjoy it awesome Awesome. So uh, I think uh, to summarize, I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. If you have enough time to go back and just kind of take a look uh, on the board, I gave different situations and places, placement to hit. Uh, and then I think that it could be huge also to, uh, if Eddie wants to kind of put it up there, the some of the other videos that we talked about, the drop and the drive, or just kind of some people may not even have seen some of those videos uh, that we did uh, quite a bit ago. I think it was probably a year ago. So, so if you are new to the channel, maybe we'll put it up there so that way you can go back. Uh, and it's, it's, I think it's pretty thorough. So, um, and again, um, if we need to um, kind of go over uh, this again next week, next week that would be. Absolutely fine. Great. And you mind if I ta have a shameless plug here real quick? Not at all. So as you guys know, Simone and I want to keep this content coming to you guys and we want it to be free for everyone. And one way that you can support us is by going to simonejarjim.store and buy some of the cool merch that we have listed there. We're going to continue to provide some amazing products here in the future as well. I'm currently wearing my t-shirt that I love. I wear it all the time. As you can see behind me here, I have this awesome mug with uh, a little Christmas tree on the back. However, they have some that aren't Christmas trees. Now I gotta tell you, this hoodie that I have back here is also great as well. It's the softest hoodie I've ever worn in my entire life. I wear it all the time. It's just a little warm tonight. Otherwise I'd be wearing it. Go out there, check it out. And if there's any products that you guys want to see, oh, wait a minute here. Wait, it looks like Simone's got one as well. Your uh, your Santa Claus so, mug. This is the one that I I I, I said I am uh, I'm I'm pretty obsessed with uh, Santa Claus. So this is the one that I went with. So I love it. But, so if you guys want to go there, check it out. You can use coupon code Simone ten for ten percent off your purchase. And if you guys have any ideas for any other products that you want, please let us know because we want to make sure that you get them. So if there are no questions or anything, uh, I will give you guys uh, one more chance to anything that uh, you would like to know. Uh, I know that uh, we didn't talk too much about the back end, uh, but at the end of the day, to me, it's kind of very similar. A lot of people have a much easier time doing the back end than they do with the forehand. And the main reason is because the body gets in the way. So when you're hitting a back end, you you take much less, like uh, your swing is, is sharper, shorter, because you can't, you don't really take the paddle back as far. Uh, so that is something to be aware uh, when talking about the forehand. The reason why I like to address that is because when you go to the forehand side, you have all the space behind. And that's where people tend to get a little too big on drives or drops. So 
Yep. Well, that's great. Uh, and again, uh, if, if you guys have any questions on uh, choosing when to drop, when to drive, check out last week's live stream. They will be able to address any of them. So I think we are good. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you next week, right, Simone? Oh, yes. I, I will definitely uh, be ready to go with, uh, I will probably have some new content and maybe at the beginning of it, uh, what I'm thinking is that if we need to dedicate a few minutes to just review and bring it together, but then we will go into some new content. Uh, and I know that uh, we, um, we haven't addressed too much about, okay, you know, the, the, um, the response to a, th a good third uh, drive or drop. So we'll go in depth into that as well. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I learned something new every week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next Tuesday. Awesome. Have a good night.